this is Mr Gilbert and in today's video I'm going to be taking you through how to do well in the design paper for your IGCSE resistant materials. Okay to do well in this paper you need to do the following things. The first thing is obviously choosing the correct exam question. In the exam you'll be given a choice of at least three different design briefs. Read through all of them. You need to pick the one that is most relevant to you. Usually it's the first question, but make sure whatever it is you're going to design is actually out of the material that you're used to using. I would advise using the question that is all about wood. Okay, you've been doing wood all about in year 10, your product, somewhere in your product you'd have used wood, so you know what you're doing. So that is the one I would be advising to actually go for. This is what the question looks like. Okay, you'll see there are questions from A all the way down to G, and they are worth different amounts of marks. Okay, four for question A, four for question B, 12 for C, eight for D, 12 for E, four for F, and six marks for G. So the whole paper is marked out of 50. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is read through the question paper and choose the question that is relating to something made out of wood. Okay, so once you've chosen the question, the, the next challenge you are facing is getting your timings correct. You only have an hour and 15 minutes to complete the whole of the exam. So getting your timings right is essential. The way to do this is if you have a look at, again, how many marks each question is worth, the best thing to do is then allocate more time to the questions that have more marks. Okay, so that's just common sense. So, you, so basically what you need to do for question A, you want to spend about two minutes, as it's quite a simple question, only worth four marks. Then four minutes on question B, because you've got some sketching to do there, so it's going to take a little bit longer. C, now this is worth 12 marks. So this is where a big chunk of your time, where you're coming up with the initial ideas for the product. You need to be spending 24, about 24 minutes on answering that question. D is worth 8 marks and 8 minutes. You want to spend about 8 minutes on that one. Now, if you look at E, it's developing a final design. And again, this is worth 12 marks, so another 24 minutes uh, should be spent on this. And then F is quite a short question. Uh, I think two minutes is adequate for that, and then you're leaving you eight minutes at the end to actually evaluate and talk about how um, your product will be manufactured in the school workshop. Okay, so the timings is really essential. Now, I would actually advise if you have one, if you take, and especially if you're doing some practicing, practice with a, a, a stopwatch on your mobile phone. Okay, so you actually get used to being able to design and get fit in all the questions. The exam papers that students don't do very well is they don't allocate enough time for the bigger questions and then they run out of time at the end and then leave them blank so you miss out on some easy marks. Okay, now this design paper isn't particularly complicated but what it's all about is figuring out what you have to do and then squeezing what you have to do into the time is the biggest challenge. Right, so you've now decided on which design brief you're going to do. Let's start at going through some of the questions and what the examiner wants to see. So this question is all about cleaning can be diff difficult when items are left lying around in the bathroom. The following items need to be stored for daily use. Design a unit that can hold all of the items shown. So we're going to be basically designing and uh, manufacturing here and looking at producing a bathroom unit that holds all of these different items. Okay, so let's, start, let's get started and see what the, the questions are all about. So question A, what it basically wants you to do here is write four specification points. Now you've all written specifications before, uh, that all they are are specific things that the product needs to be. Okay, in this case we're looking for, uh, we're, thinking about the, we're thinking about the object and what needs to happen. Uh, and we're going to talk about the um, making it easy to clean is one of them. Waterproof, because it's going to go in the bathroom. Lightweight and portable, okay, something about height. And easily accessible. So we're just looking for four different things that you want your product to do. Okay, and that's all, and, and it's pretty straightforward. Obviously, these four different things will depend on what you're designing, but 
It's just four simple specification points. Don't need to be particularly uh, detailed and expansive. If you, could, if you want to add measurements in, you can do. But if you think about Access FM, so think about the cost, think about uh, aesthetics, think about the customer, the size, maybe materials, function, and all the things that we've been doing all the way through the coursework to answer the first question. Okay, I'd recommend, as I said, spending two minutes on this first question, writing down four different points. Okay, question B. What they're going to want you to do is start, is start some sketching here. So start some sort of initial ideas. So question B. Use sketches and notes to show two places in the bathroom where such a unit might be positioned. Okay, and this is worth four marks, and I want you to spend about four minutes just uh, on actually putting down some initial sketches, in this case, thinking about where it could. So on here, we've got two different designs. One thinking about placing it on next to the sink, and then one placing it above it. Okay, you notice that they've been annotated to explain them, and they're not particularly... Uh, accurate sketches but they, they get across the information now if I'd have only done one design there I would have already halved my marks so where it says on the question show two spaces you may, uh, you need to make sure you read that and, and do that clearly if you look at the mark scheme accept drawings of two suitable places on a shelf on a wall and on the window ledge and notice they split the question in half two times two so you need to make sure that in this question Number uh, having two different ideas is really relevant and as I said about four minutes on this question moving on now to question C develop and sketch free ideas so what we're moving on to now is producing free initial ideas for the uh, actual storage unit in this case Okay, you need to make sure you do at least three designs if you only do two you're going to cut your marks down by a third obviously one idea and then you're going to get it down by two thirds if there is if you find there's not enough space on the first paper for your free ideas there is extra space on the next page okay so there is extra space here if you want to put yourself down as a third idea so let's look at what you need to do here as i said 24 minutes so we've got a big chunk of time here to create three different designs they don't they don't need to be particularly innovative they don't need to be particularly uh weird and wonderful but you do need to make sure there are three of them if we take a look at the mark scheme now for this we hear question uh, question c it's split into two parts okay so the first part talks about how good your drawings are so we have simple drawings displaying a low standard or limited range of techniques for two marks clear drawings displaying a good standard and a range of techniques colour shading annotation and then for the, this, this five to six marks high quality drawings using a wide range of techniques with clear annotation and detail so what are they looking for they're looking for some good drawing techniques okay if you only draw in two dimensions you're not going to be able to meet the top marks for six in this you need to make sure that you draw using different styles if you can so if you can add some isometric or some oblique or uh, some different things like that also it's important to add shading it needs to look and represent what it's going to be these ideas that you can see here have shading added they are in 3d they have clear annotations and you'll notice the, uh, the annotations are talking about the sizes the materials how it's actually going to function they're starting to think about how it's actually going to go together uh, okay in here so we've got clear annotations showing um, what the actual, how the actual design works as well as the sketching being of a, a good standard as well okay so this is a good chunk of time you need to spend about 24 minutes producing at least three designs now the second section of the mark scheme okay talks about how the designs need to be fit for purpose are your ideas simplistic only showing outlines two marks uh, is there a bit more detail? Are they, sen are they sensible for four marks? Or are they accurate solutions? Are they good fit for purpose with detailed construction? So you need to be thinking about how the product's going together. You need to be thinking about the sizes. And you need to make sure, obviously, that it makes sense to the examiner and you could actually, they could actually feasibly work in terms of these ideas. Okay, so this question is split into two different sections, six marks for each. 
you need to do at least three designs and make sure that they are detailed, show construction methods, a range of techniques and that all of the ideas are fit for purpose. Okay, so we're now moving on to question D. Evaluate your ideas and justify why you've chosen one idea to develop more fully. Okay, so what we're going to be looking at here is we're going to go back to your initial ideas. And I, we want to evaluate each one, picking out the positives and negatives of that idea. And we want to be spending about eight minutes on the whole of this question. So think, look at your ideas. Which one works the best? Which one meet your specifications? Is there one, are there issues with some of them? Would some not be feasible? Okay, and you're going to evaluate each idea individually. Once you've evaluated the, uh, each idea, we're then going to talk about at the bottom here the reasons why you're going to take one idea rather than the other. So you're going to be comparing those ideas, you're going to be talking about um, whether they're fit for purpose, what, uh, and which idea has got the most merit to take forward and develop into a final design. The important thing with this question is to make sure that each idea is evaluated individually. If we look at the mark scheme, D, evaluate of e evaluation of each of the ideas, at least three evaluations, up to two marks each. So if you miss one of the evaluations out, you're already dropping yourself some marks there. We're now moving on to question F. F is for four marks, and this is a quick question. Two minutes should be sufficient to actually answer this in enough detail. So F, suggest suitable specific materials for your solution and give reasons for your choice. Four marks. Okay, so what we have here is we have two different sections, two different materials, and then some justification as why that is the appropriate material. So this student has decided to make it out of acrylic plastic because it's light, lightweight and waterproof. It can also be easily made into different shapes. Okay, so what you need in this question is uh, a suitable material and then an appropriate justification for that choice. Now you need to be specific in your material choice. You cannot say it must be made out of wood or it must be made out of plastic. So it might be worth, before you going into the exam, you actually have a look at or remind yourself of some examples of woods and also some examples of plastics and maybe some examples of metals as well. Then you'll be armed with uh, some good examples of different of the, uh, ones of those materials as we're answering the resistant materials question. Okay, so for this question, short question, two minutes, choosing materials and justifying their reasons for your choice. Right, we're now moving on to question E. And this again is another big section. It's worth 12 marks. So we want to be spending about 24 minutes on this question to make sure that we put enough detail in there to get us those marks that we need so D, draw using a method of your choice a full solution to the problem, including construction details and major dimensions. So what are we looking for in this question? This is development. Okay, so we're taking the idea that we've just evaluated and we are developing it further. Okay? This is not just your initial idea drawn a bit bigger. What this is, is actually thinking about how you could improve that initial idea. How can you develop it? What can you change? How is it actually going to be manufactured now? We need to make sure that your ideas are well drawn, that they include all of the details that someone would need to be able to make it. So that's things like the materials that have been made from, the sizes of all the different things, how different parts are going to go together, and starting to think about how it would be manufactured. Okay, This is a good example of some development here, thinking about Again, how we attach the two parts together, a dowel joint in there, they're talking about the materials with the rubber and the, and the acrylic, and they've got in here lots of diameters and dimensions that they've actually put in here to get these marks. If we look at the mark scheme for this, okay, again, this is split into two sections. So 
How, is there poor line quality? Proportions, little detail for, for one mark. Good line work, use of colour, proportions and some detail for up to three marks. Is there a high standard throughout with a range of techniques that show clearly all detail? Okay, All of the detail there is quite important. Uh, if you don't put the dimensions on, or just a couple, you're going to lose yourself some marks there. Okay, so make sure that all of the dimensions there are added so someone, if someone was making it, they would know all the sizes of all the different things. Okay, so that, that's, all, that's those marks here. Uh, we're then going to go on to the construction details. That was about quality of drawing. Is there a simplistic approach showing little or no detail of construction to be used? That's for up to two marks. Most construction details may be obvious from overall view, views or with some annotation for four marks. All construction details will be clear with good annotation and additional detailed drawings as necessary. So what you might have to do to actually establish how someone would make it is you might need to add different views of your product to, so sh to show all the dimensions. You might need to pull, about, pull apart aspects and think about actually how the product is put together with the joints, with the materials, with the sizes. Okay, so this, this question, 12 marks, 24 minutes, is all about developing your idea and showing the examiner exact sizes, exact construction methods and how it all goes together. Right, we're now moving on to the last question, question G. Outline a method used to manufacture one part of your solution in the school workshop. And this is worth six marks. Now, I would suggest you spend about eight minutes on this. Uh, that should be sufficient in terms of getting across. Don't forget, it says one part of your product. If your product is made out of lots of different aspects, this is only asking for one part. Okay, so what we're looking for here is a bit like a step-by-step -step plan. So this is where it's really good that you've chosen the resistant materials question. You all have experience of making things out of woods and out of metals and, and, um, and plastics. So you should know or you should have an idea about how this is going to work. Now, some things... Are, can be made using hand tools. Some things can be used using CNC, such as laser cutters or the CNC machine. If you do choose to answer about the laser cutter and about the CNC machine, you do need to make sure that you know what you're talking about. You need to talk about the setting up of the CNC machine or the setting up of the laser cutter, getting the heights right, getting the materials in and all of those different things. But all we're looking for here, six marks. And if we look at the mark scheme, so this one, okay, suitable method stated is one mark, good detailed description of the process, and then including the tools for another two marks, adding up to a total of six. Okay, so you can see here on the example that we have, uh, it's split into six different stages, and there's detailed writing about what they did in each of the stage, outlining and making sure that they're describing the process but also talking about the tools that they use to make it. Okay, so basically this is uh, an outline of how to do well in the design exam. Um, it's not a particularly complicated exam. The main challenge is, as I said, is making sure that you actually get your timings correct and you pick the right question. If you do that and you, uh, and you get the exam finished, then it shouldn't be much of a challenge. Okay, I wish you all the best with your exams, and I uh, hope this video was helpful uh, in terms of getting you uh, getting you through and uh, doing what you need to do for it.